Neanderthals, a day in the life. When asked to picture a Neanderthal, most of us immediately think of a dumb Fred Flintstone type carrying a club, wearing fur, and finding the nearest woman to knock over the head and drag back to their cave. Well, that's wrong. Neanderthals were a social and capable species who were far more intelligent than we think. Thanks, TV. It's somewhere between 300,000 and 800,000 years ago. In a mountainside cave, the Neanderthal wakes up in a pile of furs. Their family is all sleeping nearby. They stir and stretch, ready to start a bright new day in the Ice Age. Let's take a closer look. The male Neanderthal is about 5 feet 5 inches tall. The female is about 5 foot 1. They are both robust and stocky, like rugby players. Both have wide, flat features and a big nose with large nostrils. Their physique allowed them to retain a greater amount of body heat than humans today, and when it was chilly, which it often was in the Ice Age, they could take more air in through their nose, which would warm and humidify, increasing their core body temperature. There are others in the cave with them, a child and even an elderly relative, well, elderly for a Neanderthal. Their average life expectancy is 30 years, with only 20% making it all the way to 40. All have their own roles to play in the survival of the family group. This family group lives in far west Europe, around what we now call Belgium. But evidence of Neanderthal stretches across two continents, from Western Europe all the way to Eastern Asia. And although they lived across a wide area, their numbers were small. At their peak, there was an estimated 52,000 Neanderthals total, but across most of their 500,000 years of existence, their numbers were much smaller, usually in the 10 to 20,000 range. So how did they survive? We don't know whether Neanderthals knew how to make fire or not. Although they used fire, it's unclear whether they were capable of making it themselves or relied on instances where they were naturally able to use it, for example, capturing flames from wildfires or lightning strikes. Either way, they didn't necessarily need it in the same way as we do today. They were able to eat their food raw and often did, and their overall physique was able to handle the cold far better than modern-day humans but they are still one of the first intelligent hunter-gatherer societies. In the case of our Neanderthal on their mountainside, the best way of acquiring food was through hunting. Using rudimentary weapons, they'd track a mixture of animals including deer and foxes. Often, especially for big animals, the Neanderthals would team up with their neighbors to hunt down and overwhelm their prey. And it wasn't just the men who did the hunting. All strong and capable members of the group took part in providing food, raw or not. But their tools were clumsy, and it was difficult to catch the faster species. So when they could, they would hunt slow, lumbering creatures like the woolly mammoth or woolly rhino. The group would choose the youngest or weakest members of the herd and separate them from the rest before overwhelming them using homemade spears to bring them down. They would split the food and animal hides equally before returning to their own family groups. Now let's head a little further south, where it's warmer, to modern-day Spain. Meet the world's first vegetarians. These Neanderthals are living in the forest away from the large animals that their mountainside cousins hunt. Instead, they spend their days roaming the woods, foraging for enough berries and plants for all members of the group to eat. But the most common diet of a Neanderthal was a mixture of both, where their hunt was supplemented with foraged plants and berries. But before the Neanderthal went out hunting or foraging, they needed the weapons or tools to do it, and something to keep them warm. And of course, Neanderthals had to follow their food. So they didn't always stay in one place for long and would often move, setting up new encampments where they ended up erecting surprisingly sophisticated shelters using animal hides and rudimentary tools. So each day, some time would be spent creating tools and prepping their weapons so they could be crafted in a short amount of time, even if on the move. They were intelligently crafted and made from simple materials like sharpened stones, sticks, and animal hides or bones. Strips of animal hides would make a good handle or tie for a sharpened stone, allowing the Neanderthal to attach it to the end of a long stick or animal bone to create a rudimentary spear. Other tools, like hammers or awls for punching holes into hides, were also made from animal bones, and deer bones were used to tan leather and make it smooth. Lastly, other parts of the animal hide would be chewed on and heated over the fire, if they had one, to make it more flexible before being made into rough body coverings or shoes to protect against the elements. In order to hunt and build shelters, they needed to communicate. 
the Neanderthal had a surprisingly advanced system of language, able to create hunting plans and convey emotion through a combination of sounds and physical movement. Although they may not have figured out speaking just yet, they were still able to feel complex emotions and work together as a group. It was also probably the first time a human-like species showed some understanding of emotions like grief. Graves discovered indicate a basic understanding of mourning, death, and mortality. Over a third of the ones we found were of Neanderthals under the age of four, suggesting that children may have received greater care during the burial process. There are even indications they left flowers around the graves, implying some sort of ceremony or sense of memorialization. But the weak were not simply left to die. We found remains of those who would not have survived alone due to disability or illness, yet they clearly lived with these maladies, suggesting they were looked after and valued by the Neanderthal family group for reasons other than hunting or foraging. Not only that, but Neanderthals would treat these illnesses in their weaker members, like a dental abscess. A Neanderthal with a painful tooth would try to alleviate the pain by chewing medicinal plants or penicillium, the fungi from which we now create penicillin. And all this hundreds and thousands of years before humans discovered how to turn it into an antibiotic. Surprisingly, the Neanderthal lifestyle wasn't just hunting, gathering, weapon making, and mating. In their spare time, they also showed some of the first rumblings of artistic creativity. Let's return to Spain 60,000 years ago and the site of some recently discovered cave art. Now, we're not talking Picasso or Van Gogh levels of artistry. This was a scraping of colored pigment across stalagmites, but it did form a pattern of dots and lines that suggests some degree of emotional intelligence in its creation. From a society that may not have even discovered how to make fire yet, any artistic creativity at all is pretty impressive. Thank you for watching another episode of my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates on more exciting content. See you next time.